you have your Bible let's go to Luke chapter 19 verse 9 and 10 and it says the following and Jesus said to him this was the Zacchaeus the little man he said today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost Uh, Luke in chapter 19 tells us a story of mainly two men, two collectors. One collected money for Romans, the other one collected people for God. His name was Jesus and the first man's name was Zacchaeus. One man gave his fortune to save the world. Another man made a fortune by hurting the world. And these two collectors met. One collector was very short. His name was Zacchaeus. He had a very lucrative job but this was a very crazy job because Rome would come to a place, a region and instead of raising up taxes or picking up taxes they would choose a Jewish man to do that dirty work for them. So they chose Zacchaeus to collect taxes from the Jewish people so that Rome can prosper and these Jewish people were allowed and encouraged not just to collect taxes for Rome but raise taxes for themselves and people would never know the difference so here is Zacchaeus who's making a fortune out of ripping people off and people don't like him people don't like Rome and they don't like people who represent Rome especially someone who is making Rome rich at their own money and Zacchaeus was not just a collector the Bible says he was the chief he was the top dog he had people working for him. So you can imagine that Zacchaeus was not very liked in his city, in his region, though he was wealthy and though he was very rich. His riches were not based on righteousness but on a sin. And this Zacchaeus had a desire to see Jesus. Though he lived a very bad life, he had somewhere deep in his side and just a curiosity to look at Jesus. And Jesus was going to Jericho now we don't know exactly what was the real reason Jesus went to Jericho but we found out a little bit later why he went to Jericho he went to Jericho for this little big sinner his whole reason of going to Jericho was to be able to meet a man who is an outcast who is the scum of Jericho people don't like him people don't like his name people just don't like nothing about him and Jesus goes there to meet him it's interesting that, that the Pharisees look at this Zacchaeus and they call him a sinner they judged him the crowd looked at Zacchaeus and they saw how short he was and he wanted to push through to see Jesus and what they did they ignored him but our Lord Jesus Christ does not judge a little big sinner and he doesn't ignore a little big sinner he actually makes him the reason why he comes into a big city there is three main attitudes people have toward the sinners the first attitude is the attitude of the religious person it's when they judge a person they judge them with their words they judge them by saying things for them and they say oh this person is such a loser this person is an alcoholic this person is this this person is that they judge them religious people judge people but there is also the second category of people that don't judge people they're better than that but they ignore them it comes so naturally for them have you ever ignored somebody it's interesting you don't have to take a class to ignore somebody you don't have to read a book of how to ignore somebody you may not be able to know how to start a conversation but you know how to avoid somebody you quickly pass over to the other side of the street and you pick up the phone and you pretend like your mom just called you yes mm -hmm. yes what were you saying somebody walks into the church and you want to ignore them and you quickly pretend that you were interested in talking to someone else and that's exactly what the crowd was doing the crowd didn't pick up the stones that threw at Zacchaeus they didn't just give him you know a middle finger they didn't push him aside and say you just a scum of the earth you're worthless you're nobody what they did is they turned their back toward him and sometimes that's what we do as Christians we when, when we see somebody who is in sin or somebody who is struggling we, we pride ourselves that we're not the judgmental and the critical yet we cannot applaud ourselves with the fact that we're also extremely smart on avoiding people 
because we don't want to get our hands dirty because we don't want to have a long conversations we just want to avoid people but I love Jesus for this reason it's because Jesus doesn't judge people but he also doesn't avoid people he seeks the very people religious people judge and the crowds avoid don't ever get your opinion about Jesus from religious people because Jesus is not like religious people and Jesus is not like the majority majority will pass you by and Jesus will not pass you by he will go right into your situation and get his hands dirty lose his reputation trying to save yours that is our Jesus can somebody say amen why does he do that why does Jesus have the heart of compassion when others don't how can I be more like Jesus by not avoiding hurting people people who are struggling or in sin you must understand that the reason why people judge Zacchaeus is because probably many of them were ripped off by Zacchaeus probably many of them were hurt by Zacchaeus many of them had to pay a lot more money than normally because of Zacchaeus the reason the crowd turned their back on Zacchaeus because many of them were offended by Zacchaeus's actions Zacchaeus caused pain to people around him and many people can never look above or beyond the pain that sinners cause to them or to people around them our Lord Jesus Christ has a better view he does not focus on the pain people cause he focuses on the pain people carry he understands something about psychology that if somebody is causing pain it's because they're having one if somebody is inflicting pain to people around them if a little girl is getting drunk all the time and she's hurting her mom and she's hurting her family and she's hurting herself it's because this little girl is also living in pain she's living with demons she's living with darkness and judging her is not gonna help her and not seeing the pain she is in won't help her either if you want to help somebody look beyond the pain they cause to others and look at the pain they're living in themselves and sometimes it helps to zip a person open not physically but emotionally to know really what's going on with them I remember when I was meeting with one young man and I was I was like already I prepared my lecture I'm gonna just beat this guy with my with, with the truth you know with the truth in love of course until I start opening up I start talking with him and he started to open up and he said you know I'm this was about 16 or 17 years old young man and he said at the age of 10 you know we were on a family vacation I walked into the room and there was my father who was cheating on my mother with a nanny who took care of me when he said that he said at the age of 10 he says I was exposed to that he says it twisted my life he says it destroyed my perception this is the man that I look up to he says after that I didn't know how to put the pieces together and my life started going this way he said pastor Vlad you won't believe people men in my family don't live a holy life when he said that after that all of my little bullets that I had for him they disappeared instead of fe feeling like I want to tell him the truth I wanted to help this man instead of looking like at the man like a criminal I saw him more like a blind man who's looking for the road and it's worthless it's pointless it is it is cruel to push a blind man into the cave and after that I started I had a sympathy I know that he hurt other people I know that other people suffered because of him but see a lot of times we don't unzip the person to find out what demons and what struggles what curses are they are carrying and under a way they are living in hurt people always hurt people blessed people bless people happy people make other people happy but a hurt people will hurt people I remember meeting another young man who also I was trying to counsel him and encourage him and I kind of had a little emotional anger already built up because of some decisions that I feel like I felt like he wasn't carrying on and as, as the conversation was going on he started to open up more and he, he told me he said lad when I was very young I was molested on numerous times by some people at this particular place and he started to cry and he says I've never told this to no one he says I'm not sure whether this what happened to me has to do with some of the decisions I've made he says I carried this all my life he says and it's, it, brings, it brings shame it brings guilt and see when you get to know the demons people are carrying the darkness that they are carrying it quickly gives you an advantage you're not a good person who always loves everyone when you get perspective you get compassion 
and Jesus always had perspective he didn't just see a little boy going hurting other people he saw a young man who was also living in darkness living in sin and living in his own demons and that why Jesus had compassion if you always lack compassion for people because of what they do they keep getting those DUIs or they keep getting you know that weed again or they keep falling into that thing again and you say man I'm just losing it with them I want to tell you something don't ever lose that why because you got to see beyond the pain they are inflicting to the pain they are carrying and Jesus Christ is able to cure of that pain can somebody say amen but see the Lord Jesus Christ didn't only see the pain that Zacchaeus was carried Jesus also saw the potential that Zacchaeus could be. See Zacchaeus ripped many people off. Zacchaeus hurt many people and that's all many people saw. But Jesus saw what could happen with Zacchaeus when Jesus will enter into his house. Because when Jesus enters into his house, you know what Zacchaeus does? He does the crazy thing. He gets up and he says, every person that I have ever hurt I am gonna pay them back and if I ever stolen anything from someone I will give them four times more on that day you wished Zacchaeus was stolen from you imagine every person who judged Zacchaeus and says such a such a sinner such a loser and when they heard Zacchaeus get up and say I'm gonna give back to every person I stole four times they're like hmm and did Zacchaeus did I ever have a contact with Zacchaeus I, I, I told you we should have went did our taxes with Zacchaeus now we have got four times more. If you reject people when they are doing the unthinkable, you will not live to see a day when they will do the impossible. If we reject people when they are high, we won't live to see a day when they're filled with the most high. If we reject people when they got admitted to you know to the jail not because of preaching the gospel in the mall but because of some other unhealthy reasons if we reject people when they fall and they stumble and we completely push it away and say I don't want to do nothing with you my friends we won't live a day to see when these people can do great things for God even better things that we can do can somebody say amen when Apostle Paul before he was a Paul he was a murderer he went around killing Christians, went around dragging people out of their houses and admitting them into prison. He comes to Damascus with letters from the high priest to do exactly the same. But God meets him. It makes him blind. And when he goes into and he spends their three days without eating and without drinking, cries out to God and in some other house in Damascus, God tells Ananias, Ananias, go to the street the straight street and in this house ask for Saul Ananias said who Saul who he said yes Saul the one who has papers to take you Ananias into prison go to his house Ananias and pray for him Lord before I lay hands on him he lay hands on me and deliver me into prison I am not going God and this is what God tells Ananias Ananias you see him as a man who does the unthinkable but I already see him as a man who will do the impossible I see him as a man who write the two thirds of New Testament see you see him as a murderer I see him as a murderer I see that Apostle Paul will spread the gospel everywhere and that he at the end of his life he will die being beheaded for the cause of Christ and some history says that the guys who were carrying him to get beheaded some of them got saved because how boisterous and passionate Paul was my friends never give up and we as church have to have a soft heart in our heart for those who are doing the worst because usually they're the ones who are the best for God those who are the most in sin the most serving God because when they get saved they don't like lukewarm Christianity they don't like sit in church for eight years and not start a home group they don't understand how you can be a Christian and not pray they don't if it doesn't fit into their mind how you can serve God and not love people and save people and heal people they want to go radical for God and God says if you don't reject them when they're doing the unthinkable I can turn it around and make him do the impossible can somebody say amen this is the vision this is the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ this is the heartbeat of God
Zacchaeus did not become a miracle because on his own he became a miracle because somebody stopped judging him somebody stopped avoiding him and somebody got into his comfortable bubble right there amongst the leaves and says Zacchaeus I know you who you are I care about you and your life will never be the same and that's going to be us that's going to be me that's going to be you and that's going to be our city can somebody say amen, amen. you know Jesus treated Zacchaeus as a lost person he even said that he says I came to seek that which was lost I don't think Zacchaeus knew he was lost but he was lost the worst thing you can do to a lost person is to tell them get lost a lot of people do that exactly a lot of times when we find a lost person we turn our back on them instead of turning our face and welcoming them and helping them to find a way not all lost people are bad not all lost people are poor not all lost people are evil some lost people are just lost and if you help them they will find a way and they will get on that way and they will be forever thankful to you can somebody say amen, amen. Zacchaeus he was a strong man he was a sinner but he was a good sinner what I like Zacchaeus for is that when he started to want to see Jesus and he said I'm gonna go and see Jesus he encountered a problem right away if I can get a napkin I'm so excited we're gonna replace these lights in very short when Zacchaeus had thank you when Zacchaeus decided to see Jesus he went on to see Jesus but the first he had two big problems the first problem was the people that were close to Jesus were not encouraging him like I already mentioned they turned their back on him and Zacchaeus had to overcome that when you decide to come close to God you're gonna have a first problem that the devil will bring to you is he will use other people to try to push you away from God sometimes those people are actually Christians or claim to be Christians or just because they have a bumper sticker and sometimes people come to church I've had you know a person in our home group who came first time for the church and she loved the service and God touched her heart she leaves the service and some people who were so-called Christians talk to her and they say to her hey you went to that church which that church that church that's a bunch of hypocrites those people they're not real they're casting out demons they got full they got demons themselves and they start talking so much bad about our church and this young lady asked them have you been to that church they said oh no so how do you speak about that church evangelizing for that church you've never been there and she said I had so much doubt in my heart whether do I come back or not but see what she recognized is that doubt and that criticism came from the devil himself it's not just hypocrisy in the church it's not just oh but this person is not real you know I see them they come to hungry generation but I don't think they're real oh trust me they are very real that's why they're that bad it's the devil that's using other people who are close to Jesus who are not like Jesus to push you away from God to push you away from the Holy Spirit to push you away from him some people have a bad church experience and they throw away their whole faith in God completely when my wife you know my wife cuts my hair all the time when the first time she cut my hair she didn't get it right I got hurt and it was pretty obvious on the back that somebody inexperienced cut my hair I didn't give up the whole idea of cutting hair because of one bear, uh, bad haircut. I didn't say that's it. I, I'm not going to ever cut my hair because I had one bad, bad haircut. That's foolish. And so many people give up their faith in God because they had one bad church experience. Did you know Tri-Cities has 150 churches? Come and visit Hungry Generation. And if you say, well, I came to service. Nobody said hi to me. Well, my wife, she got better. And she cut my hair today and it looks just fine come next week we'll get better and you will like us you will get saved get baptized and have a home group for the glory of God can somebody say amen <laughs> and Zacchaeus wants to come to Jesus but the devil puts a stumbling block the stumbling block is people but Zacchaeus steps over there he says you know what people I know you're not gonna help me to get to Jesus 
I know you're gonna remind me of my sins but I'm gonna tell you straight up I'm not here to see your cute faces I'm not here to get your autograph I'm not here to win a popularity contest I am here to see Jesus and I'm gonna see Jesus one way or the other but I'm gonna see Jesus keep that always in your mind when you come to church because if you focus too much on people oh they like me today they don't like me tomorrow you will find that the devil will use that to get you easily offended when somebody an accident steps on your toe hurts your feelings you walk out of the church and say there is no love in that church those people they're just such a sinners welcome there is room for one more all of us are sinners and all of us need Jesus I think it was on a few days ago, on Sunday night we went to Krispy Kreme with my wife. Praise God for Krispy Kreme by the way. And so we went to Krispy Kreme Donuts and there was such a big line. I remember I was standing, I'm like this is going to take me 30 minutes to get to Krispy Kreme Donuts. And I was offended inside of me. I was like how foolish that is that they made only one line. As I'm standing in that line, I'm getting closer. It starts to smell like the restrooms in Ukraine, public restrooms. Horrible smell, by the way. It started to smell and I was like, my goodness, this is giving me a headache. And I tell Lana, I was like, well, let's leave this Krispy Kreme. We're never ever gonna walk into this Krispy Kreme again. We got into the car and went through the drive-thru. <laughs> Why? Because I am there to get my donuts one way or the other. If it smells on the inside and it doesn't smell in my car, I'll use my car. But I'm gonna get my donuts. That's what you do when you come to, to the church. You don't come here just simply, oh this is too hot, or the preacher is too long, or the music is... You are here first and foremost to meet God. First and foremost to get saved. First and foremost to get touched by the Holy Spirit. Stay focused on that. Don't let the long lines, don't let something or someone distract you from that. Don't let the devil win. Hit him in his rear end and he will be defeated. Can somebody say amen? And Zacchaeus does exactly that. He overcomes the opinions of people and then he has a second problem. Okay people you don't want to let me see Jesus but then Zacchaeus has a problem with Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus is very short and so to see Jesus he has to jump and as you could probably imagine his jumping skills were not at his highest. So he cannot see Jesus because of his own short statue. Your second biggest thing that Satan will use to keep you from Jesus is to tell you that your shortcomings, your weaknesses, your small statue, the things you don't measure up at and we all are aware of our shortcomings when we come to church. Sometimes we're aware of our shortcomings when somebody gets up and shares a testimony of how tall they are and you realize yourself you're so short you're like God doesn't like people like me. I'll never be a home group leader. God will never use me. God will never bless me because I am so short and that's when the devil stands there. You don't realize it's the devil. You think it's you. You think it's the reality speaking but it's the devil using your reality tells you this. You are worthless go back home keep using that pull-up bar and do pull-ups so you can be taller but the devil is a liar God does not only accept tall people and high people he accepts short people guilty people sinners he accepts all kinds of people who can only be saved by his grace and I, I love Zacchaeus because he didn't try to go stretch himself to go taller Zacchaeus did not try harder to see Jesus. We have this in our culture today where we encourage people who are struggling to try harder. It's a good advice but if you tried hard, trying harder won't help you. If you tried hard to quit that which you're struggling with, I'm going to help you to set you free. Trying harder won't help. Let's learn from Zacchaeus. Don't try harder if you tried hard. Try different. It's not about trying harder. It's about trying different. He finds a tree and though he did not grow taller, he got higher. He climbs on the tree and now same Zacchaeus with the same problem, with the same sin and the same weakness and the same shortcoming except now Jesus passes him by and says Zacchaeus and he calls him by name and they have an eye contact and they start a relationship and a friendship. Why? Not because Zacchaeus tried harder. It's because Zacchaeus tried different. If you've come to the end of your robe, you've tried your best to change your life. The news at the Good News Church today is not try harder. 
it's not push harder it's not put one more thing on your plate to do it's try something completely different don't try anything at all come to the cross and don't strive but surrender don't push but lay down don't carry but drop it completely different but it works when I met a young man in the winkle who comes up to me grabs my hand and with this loudness in his voice says I'm going to hell and when you're winkle and you're surrounded by people you are just kind of aware of your little reputation and I was like you do he's like how do I get saved and so he asked me where the church is I invited him and that Wednesday he didn't come I was so disappointed I was like man I should have took his took taken his number but he he left too, too fast the next Wednesday there was a young man an older man sitting here and somebody called me from upstairs and they said there's this man he's calling for you I come and lo and behold there is this man who wanted to get saved in Winko and so he comes there and on that service it was a miracle catch he responds to the altar call and he gives his life to Jesus I come to find out that this man was addicted to drugs for many years I come to find out that this man only knew drugs nothing else and he tried getting rid of drugs what happened on that miracle catch he didn't come to the front to try harder he came to the front to try something completely different come to the cross that night he left the drugs right here at this altar he walked back to his work and he was so happy that the doctor thought that his boss thought he was on some new drugs he says bro whatever you're on right now is definitely heavier than whatever you've been on before he said sir I'm not on any drugs I've been at hungry generation and Jesus touched me and now it's been months and this man has been touched by God and has not went to that lifestyle on the opposite now he's preaching and he's inviting other people and last Wednesday the Holy Spirit touched a problem that he had in his stomach for some time and completely healed him try different try the cross be like Zacchaeus climb on the tree Jesus was hanging on the tree so you can hide in the tree Jesus died on a cross so you can hide yourself in the cross if you're struggling with an addiction your goal is not to try harder if you're struggling with yourself your goal is not just I'm gonna try something harder I'm gonna push harder no try different surrender your life to Jesus Christ you will be surprised with how much he can amaze you we have testimonies left and right of young men and young women who say this I've tried to quit and when I stopped trying and I surrendered and I said God I'm at the end of my rope I can't do it anymore I've tried every trick that they told me and I can't do it if you can use me if you can do something with this messed up person that I am please do and next thing that happens a few months later you see the person getting up with the microphone and it's already sharing a testimony why is all of this harder didn't work because Jesus already did all the hardest work for us we have to climb on that tree hug that tree surrender ourselves to his blood and we will see his power flowing through our life can somebody say amen when Jesus comes to this young man who's hanging uh, who's there on the tree and he tells him Zacchaeus come down from the tree let's go to your house I must be a guest in your house I want to touch on this very important thought when people receive Jesus it's very important that all of us as Christians must understand the second thing after receiving Jesus in our heart we must develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit otherwise receiving Jesus gives you a peace like Zacchaeus who's hanging on the tree and he sees Jesus his happy eyes are looking at Jesus oh my goodness I'm such a messed up person and Jesus likes me so much incredible and this gives you that feeling God loves me I'm a sinner but God loves me he doesn't love the one I will become he loves the one I became the bad me the horrible me he loves me this is so soothing he forgives me of my sin you walk out from that if you don't go back home with the Holy Spirit in your house in your heart your life becomes empty we live in a generation today of young people who are sick and tired of powerless religion that's why every 
bookshelf is offering to Christians to seek energy from the sun not the son of God the other son that's why half of the movies in our movie theaters are all based on witchcraft and sorcery because there is an ache inside of your spirit and not just for peace and forgiveness but for power you always you were created as a spiritual being to be connected with the spiritual power and if you come to church and just get rules and traditions but you don't understand that Jesus who says I love you when you are on the tree says come down from the tree we gotta go to your house my Holy Ghost has to come inside of your heart you have to experience the life you're only dreaming about the life that other people are trying to get into through Ouija boards and through all kinds of witchcraft my Holy Spirit listen all of that stuff junk comes nothing in comparison with my power a young man his name was John he was one out of 16 siblings kind of like my grandma's family 16 siblings and he was one out of them eight of his siblings died prematurely out of incurable diseases his sister one sister had a cancer in her breast and when they were removing the cancer they removed her breast when they removed the breast and the cancer four more tumors showed up and she was about to die there was one more sister that he had and she had a bleeding problem she was not working she was laying on her bed and she was bleeding to death the other brother for 32 years he was a handicapped man carrying on the wheelchairs every single time and this guy named John he gets married and something happens his wife develops a tuberculosis every person in the family is dying out of sickness and this was in 1900 uh, 1900s he is at the end of his rope he's a Christian he hears that there is this room where they pray for the sick people he takes first of all his brother who is 32 years a handicapped person on a wheelchair he takes him to that room they pray for him and lo and behold his brother walks out of the wheelchair and walks back home a few weeks later he takes a sister who has her breast removed and has four cancers her four tumors in her breast they take her there she receives prayer and within a week and a half the tumors slowly disappear and a few weeks later her breasts begin to grow and it grew to exactly the same size as the other one he takes another sister who has a bleeding problem and her bleeding problem stops he takes his wife who has tuberculosis and within a short time God heals his wife from tuberculosis and God touches his life he was a lawyer making a bank at that day he touches his life with his Holy Spirit and he recognizes this Christian life is not about coming to the front Christian life is about leaving the front not to die so you can go to heaven you got saved not to get heaven when you die you got saved so you can get the Holy Spirit when you leave the church so when the Holy Spirit is in you you can do the things that Jesus did if you don't get the Holy Spirit the supernatural world that the world offers will be tempting and that world will trap you and paralyze you witchcraft new age Ouija boards I just heard a story today where a mom gave her daughter on the birthday a Ouija board what's wrong with our world you know what's wrong a hunger for supernatural and I will be very sure that that mom has belief in God why is she not giving that daughter a book good morning holy spirit because that mom like all of us in here must understand jesus did not come just to get you to heaven jesus came to prepare you for the holy spirit and when the holy spirit comes your life already becomes a taste of heaven here on earth i remember when last wednesday a young lady came up and she said my mom is in a coma it's been a few weeks after an accident and she says could you go to the hospital and pray for her and I was like mm, I'm not sure I'm like let's just pray for her right now well let's not wait for tomorrow let's pray right now so we prayed and and she actually was the one that gave her life to Jesus last Wednesday we agreed together and one of our home group leaders sends a message a few days later he said you won't believe it very short time after the prayer her mom woke up from the coma <laughs> I 
Every single Wednesday you see people getting up here and sharing testimonies like Stephanie shared a testimony last Wednesday of how having that pain from c-section you see another gentleman who shared that he had a, a ulcer in his stomach last Wednesday he was about to leave the service because the pain was so severe but he decided to stick around when the prayer for healing was offered he felt pain leave and it's already been a week never went back to the doctor and is completely free from that pain who does that Holy Spirit why do you think a young man who's addicted to seven years of drugs come to the front and after tears rolling down his eyes God touches his heart walks back and never touches those drugs again who does that the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the power the Holy Spirit is who you and I must meet and you and I must recognize if you come to the front you give your life to Jesus but if you don't develop relationship with the Holy Spirit your life will be religiously dead you may even speak in tongues but there will be no power and God didn't just come to give you salvation salvation is to prepare us for the Holy Spirit can somebody say amen and the Holy Spirit not only helps us to heal people not only helps us to bring people to Jesus but he helps us in our finances he helps us in our marriage he helps us with our addictions he helps us with our troubles and with our demons he helps us to overcome every curse and every problem because he is the power of God can somebody say amen I want to encourage each one of you right now that the Holy Spirit is in this room. He wants to be your friend. Today he's looking at you and say, Johnny, come down. I want to be in your house. Not your physical house, this house. He looks at you today and he said, Lucy, come down. Because you're living in this religion that God loves me. That is awesome. That is great. But you're not living in power. Your life is no different than the life of your friends who are Buddhist or atheists your life must carry a resemblance and that resemblance will not happen if you become a monk or if you just become a nun that resemblance will become a resemblance when you will know one thing there is the Holy Spirit and He loves you He wants to live inside of you not when you get your life cleaned up not when you reach this height of perfection but today when you recognize I need you Holy Spirit be with me Holy Spirit I will make you a guest in my house Holy Spirit and you will see His power can somebody say Amen this man that I told you, his name was John. His full name is John Jalake. Eventually he went to South Africa where he prayed for people and there was a very, very big healing revival there. People were getting healed so much that the doctors were coming and they were putting x-rays, x-ray machines in his services. They were not Christian doctors. They wanted to see for themselves how cancers would disappear under an x-ray. They were so fascinated that when he would pray for a person, they would put, a, they would put that person, his hand under an x-ray just to see how the cancers would evaporate, how tumors would leave. And so because he saw how curious they were, he told them one thing. He says, I want you guys to put your x-ray machine on my head when I will pray in the Holy Spirit in tongues. So they put it on his head. And so he takes verses, he just memorizes the verses, he speaks the verses and after that he just fills the Holy Spirit and he begins to speak in tongues. The moment that happens their machines are going off. They're looking, the doctors, the, those doctors they were surprised how his mind was expanding on the x-ray machine. And so he says, well let's do something else. Let's put all the bacteria you can find and put it on my hand. They put the bacteria on his hand. Now I would not encourage any of you to do that to your doctor, okay? Because we will have a funeral. Some of you need to get a little bit more of the Holy Spirit. So they put bacteria on his hand, they put it under x-ray and this is what they find. The moment bacteria touches his skin, it begins to like vapor evaporate. So what they did is they brought another person from the hospital who had cancer in his hand. And they put it under an x-ray. And the moment he touched the hand, it's almost they said like fire went through that cancer and there was not one ounce of cancer left. The person walked out. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? My friend, my friend, the Holy Spirit wants to work through you. The Holy Spirit has to become the center thing what we honor in our church and we will see more miracles and more of the power of God. When he was in eventually, this was a hundred years ago in Spokane, this young man, John Jalake, in five years of his ministry in Spokane, there was a hundred thousand documented physical healings people even of leprosy who were being healed the dead who were raised and Spokane during that time was declared the healthiest city in the United States why a simple man 
who had 16 of his siblings all dying out of disease said I need to get the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit raised him up to be a person who brought health to this whole city God wants to use us also but that's not gonna happen if we get religious it only gets happen if we get filled with the Holy Spirit if we recognize the Holy Spirit is all that we need and we get filled with him our life will see the change can somebody say amen